Hello everyone and welcome to Fun To Be Free. Today's journey brings us to Disney's Contemporary Resort to be on the move over to the Magic Kingdom, coming up next. Hey explorers, John with Fun To Be Free, inviting you to follow me as we discover fun together. Let's go. We're here at Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is where we're gonna start our excursion and we're gonna end up in Tomorrowland over at the Magic Kingdom where you could widen your world if you had wings. Did you know there's a pathway that leads from the Contemporary over to the Magic Kingdom? It's a short nine minute walk or about a half mile. Stay tuned and we'll take it. Up ahead is the resort's main entrance. Let's go there. This resort's been recently undergoing some refurbishments for the last several months. Now let's head through the double sets of double doors into the lobby. The contemporary has doubled down on its classic roots, a blend of the mid-century modern aesthetic with a Tomorrowland type of futuristic feel. When you walk into the lobby now, it screams modern, cool, and inviting in a way that is clearly from today's era, all while reminding you of decades gone by. Up ahead is Bell Services, and over to the right-hand side is the reception area for check-in. Behind the front desk is some original artwork. Like this painting of the contemporary and the monorail. And also some concept art from before the hotel opened. There's also this area here where you could relax and wait for your family and friends while they check in. And there's Mary Blair herself. Steakhouse 71, named for the year Disney's Contemporary Resort first opened, Steakhouse 71 harkens back to the design style of the 1970s, reimagined in a contemporary, comfortable, and sleek way. And over on this wall are some photographs depicting the design, implementation, and construction of the Walt Disney World Resort. Up ahead is the check-in podium. Let's take a look and see what they have on the menu. Steakhouse 71 offers steakhouse cuts, like an 8-ounce beef tenderloin medallions, a 6-ounce filet mignon, a 10-ounce New York strip, a six ounce top sirloin steak, a 14 ounce dry aged pork bone in rib chop, a 12 ounce roasted prime rib and classic Yorkshire pudding, and they also offer additional sides. Here's the dining room. There's the Steakhouse 71 lounge. Now let's head back to the lobby. There's even more theme decor located on this back wall. Now let's push the button for the elevator and go up. Let's head up to the fourth floor. Here on the Grand Canyon Concourse houses the Outer Rim, Chef Mickey's, and the Contempo Cafe. It also has the world famous Mary Blair mural. 
On the next level up is the monorail station. That's just one form of transportation offered at this resort. Now let's head down the escalator to ground level. There's Steakhouse 71 again. We're gonna head down this direction, past the reception area, and back outside. Located outside of these doors is the Walt Disney World Bus Transportation. This is where our walking adventure begins. Follow me. We've made it to the Magic Kingdom. The short walk wasn't too bad. You even get to see monorails along the way. Now let's go through the guest entrance. We're now inside the park. Let's head through the train tunnel and down Main Street, USA. What'd they say? But first we have to head past Town Square. At the end of Main Street USA and past the hub is Cinderella's Castle. This looks like a good spot to watch the Kingdom of Dreams cavalcade coming up soon. Up ahead and down below is the Walt and Mickey partner statue. Well, we're gonna head over in this direction, to the east, into Tomorrowland. The purple wall sits to the right of the entrance into Tomorrowland. So many guests found the purple pigment of this wall to make an ideal Instagram background that the wall quickly earned its own hashtag. Hashtag purple wall. Starting in April of 2018, it became a sought after photo stop for guests visiting the park. There's even a 50th anniversary stitch to keep you company while you take your selfie. Now let's head back in this direction over into the heart of Tomorrowland. And down towards Rocket Tower Plaza. At the luncheon pad here in Tomorrowland, have your taste buds relive the former if you had wings attraction. The entree is like the retired attraction of the same name, classic and excellent, but with a short wait. And located over to the right hand side is Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin. At If You Had Wings, guests boarded Omnimover vehicles that took them on a flight around the world, making stops in Bermuda, 
Puerto Rico and Mexico. The attraction ended by offering a bird's eye view of the United States and then a descent back to the Walt Disney World Resort flight terminal. It opened to the public in June 1972 and was Magic Kingdom's first new attraction. The various vacation destinations showcased were serviced by Eastern Airlines, the attraction sponsor and the official airline of Walt Disney World from 1970 to 1987. In June 1987, Eastern had withdrawn its WDW sponsorship, which called for several changes to the attraction. Its next incarnation, called If You Could Fly, opened later that month. If You Could Fly was an alternate version of its former self. The ride was similar, but the original music and references to Eastern were removed and hosted its last visitors in January 1989. Now it's time for a Magic Kingdom flashback. Here we are in Tomorrowland, but sadly, our journey has come to an end. With that said, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, follow me on Instagram and Patreon. Until next time, see you later, explorers.